Okay, this is unique tool number two, two, two. Unique tool number two. Uh, unique tool number two kind of carries on from unique tool number one in that this tool was also acquired from Dick and Joseph. And if you remember, Dick and Joseph had the big sawmill. Next to the sawmill, they had this rickety old shack, and the roof of the rickety old shack uh, extended out and covered the sawmill. Now, it, as I was hanging out with these two old codgers, I noticed that the roof, or on top of the roof, was all manner of bits of machinery and odds and ends of all sorts and types. And uh, there was something up there on the roof that really caught my eye. And it was a hammerhead. Uh, by the way, that reminds me. If your initials are uh, Tom Lipton, and you're the curator of one of the largest and most fascinating hammer collections that the world has ever known. You may want to use some viewer discretion. Otherwise, you may find that you are under the influence of unreasonable desire to acquire just one more hammer. You've been warned. Okay, so I got the uh, urge to ask Dick. Hey, Dick, I uh, noticed there's a hammerhead up there. Would you mind? if I had that hammer. And he said, oh, yeah, no problem. Everything that's up there is just, you know, junk that we just chuck up there. So whenever they, you know, wanted to make something disappear, they just did a little hook shot and up on the roof it went. So I was like, cool. I crawled up there to go get that thing. And while I was up there, right next to the hammerhead was this uh, brass cleat. So I picked that up, I thought, cool. And then right next to that was this, uh, brass prop and uh, well, okay I'll grab that too and this is kind of cool that the, the brass prop was turned down some machinist turned it down that'd be kind of a wild intermittent cut wouldn't it you know a good hammer and chisel mechanic would have just notched the keel and been done with it anyway so I've got the hammer head and there it is double ball peen hammer and uh I had this for many years and I finally put a handle on it and I tell you what I searched the internet for double ball peen and I could find no double ball peens anywhere. Now if you look up planishing hammer you will find some hammers that look similar to this but they have a, a flatter you know heads that are more you know like traditional head like that. They're, they're convexed, but not ball-shaped like this is. Okay, now, uh, just on a side note, speaking of uh, ball-peen hammers, I have two ball-peen hammers here that I had for a while, and I was watching uh, Tom Lipton, and he had this episode where he was shaping metal with, uh, excuse me, a ball-peen hammer. He said if he had any uh, deformations on the surface of your hammer, it would transfer to the work. So, one day I had nothing to do. I took the handles out of, out of my hammers and I mounted them on my lathe, spun them at high speed, hit it with a sanding disc of ever increasing higher grades of sandpaper, finer grades, excuse me, and then hit it with a buffing wheel, buffing compound, and uh, so you can see they're buffed up quite nice and and uh, uh, buffed those things up. They look like black pearls, don't they? So I thought, ooh, that's really cool. You know, I can shape precious metals, gold and silver, right? <laughs> yeah, what are the odds of that? Uh, well, you know, I don't recommend doing this, or at least don't do it to both of your hammers, because what happened is, you know, every time I'd pick up a punch and I'd start to hit it, I'd kind of go, oh, you know, so I'd have to pick up this and, you know, that just didn't feel right. So I had to go find another old ball peen hammer, you know, so that I could, you know, use it properly. So, look, I don't recommend doing this, or at least don't do it to both your hammers, because uh, if you do, you might as well just hook shot them, you know, on top of an old shed somewhere, for all the good they'll do you. Well, that wraps up unique tool number two. 
ball peen hammer, oh, double ball peen hammer, 